I'm doing a short video today to sort of show how I work with Washington quarters. Uh, I went ahead and punched a hole in these and annealed them for the first time. Uh, but for these two, you can see here, this quarter has a half inch punch and this has a five eighths. Uh, and if you want to keep Washington quarters from splitting, my recommendation is to go with the five eighths. Uh, it makes a little bit thinner band but it still makes a, a nice ring. You still have the full date uh, on the coin and it punches out most of the Washington head, but this is one of the best things you can do to help keep these from splitting is to start off with a beer hole, a five eighths, uh, seems to work well. You can do a half inch, but uh, it's just, uh, uh, you gotta go a lot slower and it a lot more often. So the same things I'll show you here, you can do with this. But the uh, uh, best thing you can do to keep from splitting is to start off with a larger hole in the coin. So what I do <clears throat> is uh, I'm just going to work with this one here. One of the first things that I do is make sure that the inside uh, here where I punch the hole, that the edges is rounded and smooth before I start any type of folding or stretching. And I don't mean just hitting it with sandpaper or a file. Uh, what I do is I start off first with this deburring tool. I pick these up at Home Depot, online, or whatever. <clears throat> Go around the edges to sort of get the, the sharp edge off, to get it beveled to start with. And then once I hit it with the deburring tool and do that, then I take my Dremel and have the bit on the end. I think this is a 920 or 925. I can't remember the exact <clears throat> number but it's pretty common uh, bit and I'm not sure the number is all that important it just helps to take a lot of the roughness off that you're still going to have around the edge <clears throat> when you do the deburring tool and then after the Dremel then I go around it with uh, 320 grit sandpaper so uh, I'll just sort of show that process a little bit here but it's really important to take your time doing that and getting the the inside rounded and smooth uh, before you start the folding and stretching and that just helps to prevent uh, those sort of splits uh, from starting if you do that Now when you do this, that sort of takes that 90 degree edge off, starts getting it rounded, but if you feel it, there's still a lot of sort of, it's still pretty rough. So you need to get that really smooth. Uh, so the next thing I do is I hit it with this uh, grinding wheel. So <clears throat> get it on both sides and then the inside. That's taken out a lot of the marks that that deburring tool left in it. It's gotten it uh, a whole lot smoother. 
Uh, but then finally, take your 320 grit sandpaper. And then you've got the inside of it beveled and smooth. And that's the way you want to start. So I'll come over and I'll do my first sort of folding. I'll uh, just because I have the camera running, I'll show. But I'm sure you guys know how to do this pretty well. <clears throat> And the key is all, every time you do stuff like this, do it slow. I mean, you know, don't uh, don't put your ring and your folding die under there and just do that. I mean, you're just asking for trouble. Slow and easy is key. Okay, now that I've done that, <clears throat> I've got it folded about as much as it's going to be. It's trying to go a little wonky on me, but uh, I'll see if I can get that out a little bit here. Okay, now at this point I'm going to nail again. Now I'm going to start the first stretching. And again, the key is slow and easy. Now, I might, if I was doing this uh, to sell the ring, I'm just demonstrating here, I might wrap the, the stretcher with something for the inside, but I'm not going to do that at this point. So, slow and easy, turn in your ring, and all you're wanting to do at this point is get it down. you've closed up the top and if you look at it the top is closed up here I don't know how well it comes out in the camera and essentially at this point the entire inside of the ring is 
meshing up against the stretcher. So if I continue stretching like this, I'm going to be stretching the entire ring. And this is where I run into trouble when I do that too much, uh, especially on these coins. Other coins are not such a big deal, but on these, if I continue stretching like this, I'm probably going to eventually split that ring if I'm not careful. So what I do is I take it off, <clears throat> uh, and if you look, if I turn the ring upside down, now I have a gap between the bottom of the ring and the stretcher. The only thing that's contacting the mandrel, the stretcher here, is really the reeded side. So if I stretch now, I'm really only stretching part of the ring. I'm only stretching that reeded side until the bottom makes contact again. So I go stretch here. I just stretch easily. You can see it dropping down. Okay. Once I see that I've got the ring to where it's sort of making full contact again, then I take it off and I flip it over. And now I have a gap at the top of the ring again. Okay, so then I just stretch a little bit, let it fall to close up that gap at the top of the ring. You're only stretching probably an eighth of a ring size each time you're doing this. Maybe not even that. Flip it over, same thing. Stretch the top, let it fall, until it closes up. Flip it over, stretch the bottom, let it fall until it closes up. After I do that two or three times, maybe four, you know, if I'm uh, feeling brave, then I kneel again. Okay, right now, this ring is a size 10 and 3 quarters. So let's see what we can do. Now, once I get to this point, I always sort of check, make sure I'm not feeling anything on that inside. If I am, then I go back to my sandpaper. Now, here's what you don't want to do. I think... I think a lot of people, just based on the finish that I see on their rings, I'm, hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Yeah. I think what a lot of people do is when they smooth out with sandpaper, they just take their ring on the sandpaper and do it like that. Well, if you do that, what you're doing is you're flattening out that rounded beveled edge again. You're putting those sort of 90 degree edges on it. And if you have the 90 degree edge on it, you go stretching it, you're just increasing your chances of splitting it. So if I need to smooth it again, I do the same thing before. I take my sandpaper with my hand and I go around the edges to make sure that I keep that bevel on the, on the ring. I think that keeping that bevel on the ring and keeping it as smooth as possible is really key in keeping from splitting these coins. Uh, and a lot of other coins too. I do a lot of foreign coins uh, that some of them split really easily. You know, there's some coins that, I mean, you can do just about anything to and they're not going to split. But the ones that have sort of the uh, tendency to split on you, it's really important to keep the inside cut beveled when you're doing this. So, I'll just continue the process here. So, I'll put it on. Close up. When you just see it dropping there as I'm doing this, I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure. I'm just sort of, you know, feeling the tension on the ring. Once the ring is closed up at the top, then flip it over. See that gap? So I'm doing the same thing. Basically, I'm stretching about half the ring at a time here <clears throat> instead of the entire ring. I could probably stretch this thing up to a size 18 if I really wanted to, just by continuing this process here uh, without splitting it at all. Now, if I do that uh, without any protection on the inside like I'm doing now, uh, you know, if, 
probably going to destroy a lot of the detail on the inside but you can get a very you, know, you can get you can get these things up pretty big just by doing this starting with that 5 8 hole that's key rounding and smoothing that inside that's key and then stretching it like this just by flipping it over and then at some point obviously you're going to get into your size range and you're going to want to you know, come in and uh, reduce that outside reeded area so let's go ahead while I'm here and again this is probably common knowledge but for those of you who don't know your ring reducer here the, hole, the, the reducer holes are sort of different sizes on each side so I found as I go around reducing flipping it over as you go through it helps you uh, sort of hone in reducing Okay, now that's a, that's a pretty good looking ring. I mean, I might re reduce or bevel over that reeded edge some more, but right now it is, okay. So I'm back to an 11 and a half now that I reduce that, but I'm still going to, before I finish it, I'm gonna take it, my Dremel, and I'm gonna take off a little bit of the inside uh, rim here. But let's get back on here. Let's do this just a little bit. Now I'm back to a, what am I, 11 and a quarter. What did I say before? I can't remember, but 11 and a quarter on that. So let's just take this before I... <clears throat> this video is getting a bit longer than I expected it to be, but uh, you know how things go. Just sort of do these on the fly. Now, probably <clears throat> I should stop and anneal, but. I'm going to keep going. I think I'm okay. I don't see any problems yet, so I'm just going to risk it. And I really should anneal right now, but let's see where I am with size. Still got lots of good detail on the inside of this ring as well. So that's nice. Okay, I'm at 12 and a quarter now. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm at a size 12 and a quarter. Let's, uh, let's just take a chance here. Let's live dangerous. Let's see if we can get this thing up to a size 13 before I nail again. Just the same old process. Just do it enough to close up the top where you have full contact with the ring, then flip it over. You're just essentially stretching the bottom each time, only stretching about half of the ring each time. So if you're shooting for a size 12, then obviously you want to go on up to 13, at least a size 13 on this width of a band and then reduce it and you'll be back down your target area. Okay, I really should anneal now, but let's see. Before I do, what do we have here? Uh, there's a 13. So I have it to a 13. I'm going to anneal.
checking the inside still feels pretty smooth I don't feel any burrs or anything so I'm gonna keep going Let's see what we have now. Still a nice ring, no splitting, and I'm up to a size 14 and a half on this ring. Now we'll sort of end it here. Uh, you know, if I put it in the reduction die and close down the outside to get the band a little flatter, uh, I'm at 14 and a half. I probably by the time then I that I took off a little bit on the rim here, I'd probably have at least a 13 and a quarter, 13 and a half size ring here. And I could keep going. I think I could probably take this up to a size 17 or 18 if I wanted like this. Now when you get this large starting to really sort of mess up the detail on the inside, but I don't know how you're going to get a quarter this big without doing that. Uh, but you're not splitting it. So uh, and it's really, uh, you know, as far as for a quarter, you know, take off some of the fire scale here. You, know, you have a really really nice looking ring here. 1957, no splits. I wear a size 11. You can see how big that quarter is. Now you can do the same thing with a half inch. Uh, you're just going to have to be patient and go off, you know, go really slow. But if you use the same technique, you can punch essentially any size hole you want in a quarter uh, and take it up like that without splitting it. So hopefully picked up a couple good tips.